Thomas Alive Today presents Shopco. Shopco was incorporated in 1961 by James Rubin, a native of Chicago who moved to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and opened his first discount store there in 1962. While most department and discount stores were located in and around major metropolitan areas, Rubin was among the first retailers to recognize the untapped potential of small to middling markets in the hinterlands. In these early days, Shopco's merchandise targeted male consumers with its concentration in such hard lines as automotive parts and sporting goods. By 1969, Rubin had four stores in Wisconsin and had opened a fifth in Marquette, Michigan. Within less than a decade, the founder had built Shopco's annual sales to $41 million. The 10-store chain was acquired by Minneapolis-based SuperValue, one of America's largest food wholesalers, in 1971. Over the course of the next year, Rubin groomed newcomer William J. Tyrrell to succeed him as president of Shopco. In 1972, Rubin advanced to a vice presidency at the parent company, and Tyrrell took his place at Shopco. Later described as a parent company that's been like a banker, SuperValue provided more financial than managerial support to Shopco during its quarter century of ownership. That relative autonomy was passed down through the ranks, though middle and upper executives guided the chain's general strategies, store managers were allowed to choose particular merchandise lines and models to suit their local clientele. As a result, Shopco's merchandising emphasis began to shift to housewares such as small kitchen appliances and some soft goods, including clothing, during the 1970s. Perhaps most importantly, the company pioneered several new categories for discount stores. Shopco was among the first discounters to include pharmacies in its outlets beginning in 1971. In 1978, it became one of the first to not only sell eyeglasses but also to offer in-store eye examinations. With virtually no competition in its local markets, a bevy of new merchandising strategies, and the financial backing necessary to carry them out, Shopco grew dramatically over the ensuing decade. Sales more than tripled from $41 million in 1971 to $135 million in 1978 and topped $335 million in 1982, as the chain grew to a total of three dozen stores throughout Wisconsin and the upper Midwest. Shopco's vigorous growth continued in the 1980s. The company began to move westward late in the decade, penetrating Montana and Idaho in 1986 and Utah in 1988. The chain supported these new operations with distribution centers in Nebraska and Idaho. By 1988, the company had 87 stores and had established itself as one of the nation's fastest-growing super-regional discounters, with revenues reaching over $1 billion and earnings totaling $67 million for the year. Under the continued direction of William Tyrrell throughout the remainder of the decade, the chain opened its 100th outlet in 1990. With revenues of $1.65 billion in 1991, Shopco capped 11 consecutive years of sales and earnings increases to rank 8th among the nation's discount chains. Astonishingly, the Midwest chain's operating profit was second in its retail segment that year. In 1989, publicity shy Tyrrell was named Discounter of the Year by the readers of Discount Store News. Analysts agreed that it seemed as though Shopco was doing everything right. However, challenges loomed on the horizon. Over the course of the 1980s, three mass merchandisers emerged as national powerhouses, Kmart Corporation, Target Stores, and Sam Walton's Walmart. Though Kmart and Target both entered head-to-head -head competition with Shopco earlier than Walmart, the fast-growing Texas company was perceived as the greatest threat. Walmart had by the mid-1980s taken the nation's discount merchandising industry by storm, growing from a middling regional retailer early in the decade into America's biggest and most profitable mass merchandiser. Writing for Forbes in 1992, Mary Beth Grover compared Walmart to a tornado uprooting any retailer that stood in its way. Finding itself in the path of this whirlwind, Shopco created a special task force in 1986 to formulate new competitive strategies to withstand the Walmart gale. Top executives at Shopco quickly realized that they would not be able to battle Walmart on price, especially in both chain's strongest area, hard lines. Roger Skip Chusts, Shopco's general merchandise manager of apparel, later reflected on the strategizing, noting that we realized that we couldn't position ourselves as the low-priced provider in the marketplace, that someone else owned, read Walmart, that position. President William Tyrrell put it succinctly, you can't out Walmart Walmart.
Instead, the company elected to pinpoint the behemoth's weaknesses and make them Shopco's strengths. This differentiation lay at the core of what would become Vision 2000, Shopco's strategy for success. Shopco's watershed came in 1991. That year, longtime parent company SuperValue sold a 54% stake in the discount chain to the public. The proceeds of the offering were used to pay down Shopco's debt to its parent. Dale Kramer, a former pharmacist whose career at Shopco stretched back two decades, succeeded William Tyrrell as president and CEO, while Tyrrell assumed the newly created chairman's seat. Perhaps most importantly, Kramer and Tyrrell pinned their hopes to move up and challenge the Big Three via Vision 2000, launched that same year. The plan encompassed several key elements, remodeling the entire chain, automating distribution and inventory, honing merchandising, and enhancing and augmenting Shopco's niche in health services. Specifically, Shopco simplified new look aimed for a department store atmosphere by eliminating clutter, opening up the floor plan, and adopting a bright color scheme. An emphasis on customer service brought tangibles like no-hassle refunds and no-fee layaways as well as a friendlier atmosphere. Behind the scenes, the company phased out its outdated mainframe computer system in favor of a local area network that facilitated electronic data interchange. New quick response allocation and replenishment systems accommodated the latest barcode technology, thereby reducing personnel costs and cutting lead times by as much as two-thirds. An emphasis on maintaining sufficient stocks of advertised items reduced rain checks by two-fifths. Shopco's new merchandising strategy could be characterized as the antidote to Walmart. As CEO Kramer told Discount Store News in 1993, the chain is not looking to offer its products at the lowest prices, but to offer the best quality product at the lowest price available. Shopco strategists surmised that this tactic would not only sidestep competition with Walmart, but would also prove to be the discount industry's primary area of growth. Shopco avoided Walmart's strongholds, instead focusing on five product groups, fashion, home, health, seasonal, and everyday basics. Within these broad categories, the company emphasized the hottest lines, which in the early to mid-1990s included housewares, bed and bath, casual furniture, special-sized clothing, and intimate apparel. Retail healthcare was perceived as a particularly important growth opportunity for Shopco. As a complement to its existing pharmacies and vision centers, the chain created ProVantage, a mail-order pharmacy and prescription benefit manager, in 1993. This new business was created to capitalize on an early 1990s trend that saw health insurance companies and health maintenance organizations contracting out many functions in order to streamline their own operations. ProVantage performed claims and benefit processing, management, and administration. Initially focused on prescriptions, ProVantage added vision benefit management service by mid-decade, soon boasting a network of 4,500 eye care providers. Encouraged by the new venture's rapid growth ProVantage revenues totaled $14 million by 1,995 shop co-acquired the Brevel Claims Management Company, including a network of 40,000 retail pharmacies, in 1995 and acquired the Vision Benefit Management Division of United Wisconsin Insurance Company in 1996. Though it had clearly been making progress toward its goals, the company stumbled in 1993. Sales flattened at $1.7 billion, and net earnings dropped by more than one-third from $50.1 million in 1992 to $32.1 million in 1993. Shopco blamed the anemic economy, but unhappy shareholders carped about executive salaries, and retail trade magazine WWD dubbed the company Dropco. At least one industry analyst, Don Longo of Discount Store News, pegged the odds of Shopco surviving the early 1990s recession at 6 to 1. However, in 1995 Shopco emerged as the only profitable chain among the nation's top regional players. Vision 2000 and the executives who implemented it garnered much of the credit. In 1996, Discount Store News called Shopco's strategic plan a visionary stroke made at a time when many other retailers were still confidently practicing the same strategies that had brought them success in the 1980s. That year, the readers and editors of Discount Store News selected Dale Kramer Discounter of the Year. The proud CEO told Discount Store News' Don Walensky that few other retailers can claim such far-reaching change as Shopco has achieved in just a few short years. We have a visionary strategy for general merchandise, a rejuvenated store base, logistics capability to support growth, an outstanding health services strategy and world-class technology to take us into the future. 
the Pro Vantage startup had proven particularly auspicious. Its sales grew from $14 million in fiscal 1995 to $100 million in 1996 and to over $300 million by fiscal 1997. By that time, the Benefits Management Division was contributing about 15% of sales and 8% of operating profits. In fiscal 1997, the company filled over 10.2 billion pharmaceutical and optical prescriptions. That same year, Shopco launched a four-city test of a new concept, standalone eye care centers dubbed Vision Advantage Stores. Though Shopco had yet to surmount its high profit mark of $50 million set in 1992, sales advanced by more than one-third, from $1.7 billion in 1994 to $2.3 billion in 1997, while net earnings advanced more than 40%, from $32 million in 1994 to $45 million in 1997. In his 1997 letter to shareholders, CEO Kramer compared Shopko's performance to the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers, noting that the Packers created their own destiny, through planning, intelligence, logic, hard work and, of course, teamwork putting team goals over personal goals. They put the pieces in place and labored hard to make their dream come true. As did we. That July, Shopco achieved complete independence from longtime parent SuperValue when the latter company divested its remaining 46% stake in Shopco. Shopco paid about $150 million to repurchase about one-fourth of its own equity, while the remaining 21% stake was offered to the public. Though merger negotiations with Youngstown, Ohio-based Farmore Incorporated broke down in April 1997, a major acquisition or merger appeared to be in Shopco's future. Analysts also speculated that a deal with trouble discount chain Hill Stores Company could be in Shopco's future. Shopco's chief financial officer, Jeffrey Jones, hinted at the possibility, telling WWD that the company is scouting for deals that would bring us growth opportunities. That year, Shopco acquired Penn Daniels and its 18 Jacks discount stores, but its truly big move was not made until 1999. By the end of the 20th century, Shopco had carved a niche as an upscale, lifestyle-driven discounter, according to DSN Retailing Today. However, President and CEO William Padani, who succeeded the retiring Dale Kramer in 1999, determined that major market saturation by the big boxes would prevent Shopco from ever becoming a national chain. Like his predecessor, Padani hoped to establish a nationwide reach by focusing on his key competitors' weaknesses. That year, Shopco acquired Pomida, a chain of 148 discount stores. Padani characterized the retailer as a 20th century version of the general store, with everything from milk to hunting and fishing gear. A key to the Pomida concept was its presence in rural markets, often towns of 10,000 people or less and not coincidentally, far from a Walmart, Target, or Kmart. Shopco envisioned an aggressive expansion of the chain to 500 stores nationwide. To that end, the parent company acquired Prime Minister Place's 49 units in 1999 and converted them to Pomida stores. That year, Shopco also sold the ProVantage Pharmacy Benefit Manager operation to pharmaceutical giant Merck for an estimated $222 million. The corporation capped a decade of steadily rising revenues with record sales of $3.9 billion and earnings of $102.2 million that year. In 2000, Shopco added 76 Pomida stores, bringing the chain to nearly 240 units by the end of the year. Everything seemed to be going according to plan, but the rapid expansion soon took its toll. Distribution problems began to emerge, Shopco's debt load increased to $840 million, and a recession hit the retail industry particularly hard. Known as a decisive leader fond of dramatic strokes, Padani wasted no time bringing a halt to the expansion strategy. In January 2001, he instituted a drastic restructuring, shuttering 23 stores and a distribution center, and furloughing 2,500 employees. Shopco continued to retrench in the ensuing years, slashing its debt by nearly half, reducing inventories and controlling expenses. Management fine-tuned operations and tweaked the mostly print advertising campaigns. Nonetheless, the corporation suffered a net loss in 2000 and sales declines in the ensuing two years. William Padani stepped down in April 2002, and Sam Duncan was recruited to succeed him as president and CEO that October. Having reduced its debt significantly, refined its internal business practices, and weathered a lingering recession, Shopco planned to resume investment in growth and rejuvenation in 2004. A key focus of the expansion would be on what insiders called retail health, namely pharmacies and optical shops. 
this business center constituted more than one-fourth of the Shopco division's revenues and 16% of Pomida's sales by 2003. The corporation hoped to capitalize on this strength not only by growing the number of pharmacies in Pomida stores, but also by testing new standalone drug stores featuring optical departments. In 2005, Shopco opened the first few Shopco Express locations, which were smaller, and aimed at competition with Walgreens and CVS Pharmacy. Around that time, the chain exited the state of Colorado with some locations were acquired by J.C. Penney, and closed its Reno, Nevada locations. Also later in 2005, Shopco was acquired by Sun Capital Partners. In May 2006, Michael McDonald took over as the company's CEO. In 2007, all Pomida locations spun off from Shopco. Also in 2007, Shopco rebranded, dropping the capital camel case K in its name and introducing a new logo, but Shopco Express stores retained the older style until fall 2008. In 2008, Shopco Express expanded into urban markets with the opening of a Green Bay, Wisconsin location, but this store was shuttered less than a year after it was opened. Shopco also started to anchor more shopping centers, such as the ones in Swamico, Wisconsin, and North Branch, Minnesota. In April 2009, Michael McDonald resigned as CEO to become CEO of DSW Incorporated and was replaced by W. Paul Jones. Shopco also started online shopping service website. In May 2010, Shopco outsourced its IT services to HCL Technologies, based in Chennai, India. Shopco also opened its first two Shopco hometown stores, which were converted from Pomida locations. In 2011, Shopco placed even more emphasis on its hometown subsidiary, opening nine new locations and closing regular stores to focus on the hometown stores. In 2012, a decade after it spun off from Shopco, Pomida merged back with Shopco, all Pomida stores were rebranded as Shopco hometown stores. The total cost for the remodel was estimated at $80 million. Later the same year, W. Paul Jones resigned from the company's top post and Mike Bettega took over as interim CEO. In 2013, Peter McMahon was named Shopco's new CEO. In 2015, due to bankruptcy, Shopco acquired 20 Alco stores locations with the plan of converting them to hometown locations. Shopco also changed its slogan to the stuff that counts. Late in 2016, Shopco closed four stores due to poor sales but also opened one in Ely, Nevada. In November of the same year Shopco launched its first credit card. Shopco also remodeled its larger stores to include some groceries, with limited frozen and perishable goods. On December 4, 2018 Shopco confirmed that they were closing 39 stores. The following day, Bloomberg reported that Sun Capital had failed to find a buyer for Shopco and that the Capital Partners found a Chapter 11 situation increasingly likely. Shopco began closing its pharmacies in December 2018 and selling their patient records to local competitors including Walgreens, CVS, Hy-Vee and Kroger. On January 8, 2019, McKesson Corporation filed a suit against Shopco, seeking $67 million in delinquent payments. Along with the announcement, it was reported that Shopco could file for bankruptcy as early as January 15, 2019. On January 16, 2019, Shopco filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Nebraska court, citing tough market competition and assets of less than $1 billion compared to liabilities of up to $10 billion. Shopco also announced the closure of another 105 of its 363 stores, including its original Military Avenue store in Green Bay. On February 7, 2019, Shopco confirmed the closure of 251 stores or 70% of its locations closing in phases between March 2, 2019 and May 12, 2019. The list included 77 Shopco stores, 165 hometown value stores, both the two standalone pharmacies, and all seven express stores. Shopco will exit the states of California, Colorado, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Nevada, New Mexico, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, Utah, and Washington. On March 18, 2019, Shopco announced the closure of all remaining stores due to a buyer not being found for the chain. Liquidation sales ran through the summer. 
On April 22, 2019, Shopco announced to employees that despite the fact that the company signed a contract for severance pay, only certain states would actually be paid. In April 2019, Monarch Alternative Capital LP purchased Shopco's optical operations for $8.5 million. The optical centers continued to operate inside the otherwise shuttered store locations until smaller locations could be found. Several former Shopco locations have been repurposed. The former Shopco hometowns in St. Peter, Minnesota and New Prague, Minnesota have been converted to high vs A former Shopco in Mankato, Minnesota is currently being converted into a mixed-use space intended to house a restaurant, indoor ice rink, and indoor event center. But somebody returned it. Maybe it was the wrong color, or too big. It really doesn't matter. What matters to us at Shopco is your satisfaction. If you want to return anything for any reason, return it. No problem. Our no-hassle return policy pays off because it makes our customers happy. And that's what Shopco wants. Happy customers coming back again and again. Say hello to a goodbye at Shopco. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.